Good morning, and welcome to the Shepherd's Morning, where we rise with the Lord and rely upon His Word every day of our lives. Today is May 8th. Let's pray together, brothers and sisters. Holy God, we give you thanks for this fine morning, for this opportunity to gather with friends and loved ones, to open up your holy word so that we might know you better, so that we might hear what you have to say to us. Help us to be good receivers of that, O oh Lord. Help us to open our hearts as we open our ears and our minds to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we read from Charles Spurgeon's Morning by Morning, a devotion written back in the 1800s. And that begins with God's holy word. And then we explore that word together. Let's see what Charles has to say to us this morning. From John chapter 5, verse 13. He that was healed did not know who it was that healed him. Years are short to the happy and healthy, but 38 years of disease must have dragged a very weary length along the life of the poor, impotent man. When Jesus therefore healed him by a word while he lay at the pool of Bethesda, he was delightfully sensible of a change. So the sinner who has for weeks and months been paralyzed with despair and has wearily sighed for salvation is very conscious of the change when the Lord Jesus speaks the word of power and gives joy and peace in believing. The evil removed is too great to be removed without our discerning it. The life imparted is too remarkable to be possessed and remain inoperative. And the change wrought is too marvelous not to be perceived. Yet the poor man was ignorant of the author of his cure. He knew not the sacredness of his person, the offices which he sustained, or the errand which brought him among men. Much ignorance of Jesus may remain in hearts which yet feel the power of his blood. We must not hastily condemn men for lack of knowledge. But where we can see the faith which saves the soul, we must believe that salvation has been bestowed. The Holy Spirit makes men penitent long before he makes them divine. And he who believes what he knows shall soon know more clearly what he believes. Ignorance is, however, an evil. For this poor man was much tantalized by the Pharisees and was quite unable to cope with them. It's good to be able to answer gainsayers, but we can't do so if we know, don't know the Lord Jesus clearly and with understanding. The cure of his ignorance, however, soon followed the cure of his infirmity, for he was visited by the Lord in the temple, and after that gracious manifestation, he was found testifying that it was Jesus who had made him whole. Lord, if you have saved me, show me yourself, that I may declare you to the sons of men. Beauty. <clears throat> I'm thinking about the story that Spurgeon just wrote about with the lame man who is there waiting and trying to get into the healing waters at the Pool of Bethesda. He'd been there for such a long time, the Bible says. And finally, he was looking for healing, he was looking for power, but finally it comes upon him in a way that he didn't expect, that he didn't plan for. His plan, of course, is to get taken down into the healing waters so that he can get that first wash and be healed. And yet he can't do it. He's not strong enough on his own. Of course, the metaphor is that none of us are. What's interesting is that when it comes upon him in a way that he doesn't expect, through Jesus showing up, 
the healed man doesn't even know that it's Jesus. He's either never heard of Jesus or to recognize him. Something happened there. More than that, right after he's healed, Jesus fades into the crowds and the crowds obscure his viewer. Obs crowds obscured his view. I say all this to remind us that being able to recognize someone is important. I had a friend who went to a Reba McIntyre concert back in the 90s. Pretty tough to get into. After the concert, his date and he were on a side street near the concert hall. They weren't too far away um, from where the actual concert goers were coming out in the front and whatnot. And they were waiting for a ride, and then, of course, another concert goer was just up the street from them sitting sitting there. And my friend looked at that other concert goer, and I remember how he told the story. He said, he goes, and he looked over at his date and said, he goes, doesn't that woman look like Reba? Now, the crowds, again, had already left. You know, this was after the concert. They were just kind of out on the side street. And the woman went, you know, yeah, I guess it does and whatnot. My friend was persistent. And so he said, hang on. And he approached the woman. He said, excuse me, are you Reba McIntyre? The woman smiled, and it was. She greeted him, as my friend described it, very warmly, very kindly, and said she was waiting for her ride, which was distinctly late, because usually she walks out and just gets right in. And as he spoke to her, he was literally, it was this massive black elegant SUV rolls up and the men get out and she gets in and said goodbye. But the way he described it was this surreal experience. Here this bigger than life celebrity that he just paid money to see from afar, never expecting to be close to her, absolutely never expecting to talk to her, was just standing on the side of the street waiting for her ride. I'll never know the circumstances that led to that moment, but it left an impression on him. And it happened because he knew who she was. He recognized her. So important. The lame man, as I said in John's story, has Jesus approach him and Jesus heals him. But clearly, he's never seen Jesus before because he didn't know him. Jesus heals him, though, simply because he knew the man had been lame for so long. The man couldn't do it on his own. There was a need, and God moved into it. But here's the interesting thing. When the Pharisees later on come and challenge the man, asking him who did it, Jesus had already faded back into the crowd, as I said. The lame man couldn't say, oh, that man right there. He said, I don't know who it is. I just know that I was healed, and he told me to pick up my bed and walk. See, Jesus hadn't led with, do you know who I am? I'm the Son of God. I'm going to be your Savior. In fact, the theme throughout Scripture leading up to this point as Jesus goes through his time with his disciples is often this revelation. Do you recognize who I am? Don't go and tell anybody. But do you recognize? See, Jesus doesn't give you his resume. He gives you his love. He doesn't give you his name. He gives you his caring. The recognition is up to you. Yet Jesus did emerge from the crowd to guide the man. It was more than just a singular act of caring and love. Jesus reemerges, says, It's good to see you walking. Go and sin no more. He gives life advice how to make the most of your life. And what does the black or the what does the lame man go to do? He goes to proclaim Jesus, who healed him now. Consider, God arrives and gives good gifts to all his children. 
when you're in need. God shows up. But will you recognize him in your life when he does? Or will you merely say that it was a stranger on the street corner? We want to know and recognize Jesus. Then we need only to read the word of God. To recognize his behavior. Recognize his life. To know his presence. Reba didn't have to say who she was to my friend. She didn't say, hi, I'm Reba McIntyre over here. My friend knew in advance. He recognized her. And he went away telling me and others of his joyful meeting with her. Can you imagine what it would be like to meet Jesus? And when you imagine it, do you consider it a coincidence in your mind? Or would it be a God incident that he lined up to heal you, to guide your life into your very best living? Well, you know it's him at all. If you do, you can give him the glory, recognizing what he did for you, how you can help others to see him, to recognize him too. My friends, we're all called to share the good news of Jesus. We're called to help others know who Jesus is. We show up and we care like Christ in the lives of others. And so, in so doing, just as Jesus did here, we then talk and help them understand the guidance of the Lord for their lives. We usually start by talking about what he's done in our lives so that when he does it in their lives, these other individuals that we're speaking with might give God the glory and praise his holy name. Wow. God doesn't just say, read a book about me. God doesn't act like a celebrity at a distance. God says, hey friend, come join me. Be part of this. Proclaim. Heal. Love. It's beautiful. You and I get to be part of it. I hope you do. Part of recognizing him. Part of caring for others. Part of giving God the glory and testifying to what he does. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Holy God, help us to know you better. Help us to stay in your holy word. Help us to open it, to read it, to write your word on our hearts. Lord, Help us to know Jesus as our Savior, our Healer, our Lord Almighty. Help us to testify openly to what he has done for us, so that others will come to know him too. We ask this in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for this time this morning. It has been a true joy to spend it with you. May the Lord bless you, may he keep you, may he make his face to smile upon you, and may he encourage you to know him through his holy word and take it out to the world entire. Brothers and sisters, walk in peace, walk in love, walk in Christ all your days. I'll see you in the morning.